Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by Muslims by his eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. May Allah prolong his life. I'm Mohsin Shah and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ar. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How are you? Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. Sheikh, we were discussing um, you know, things that invalidate the Salah, we were discussing doubts. Can I ask you what sort of doubt invalidates the Salah? أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد The doubts come into different categories um, The ones which are invalidate the salah The ones in which you have to ignore And the ones which are correct We begin with the invalidating doubts الشكوك المبطلة that invalidates uh, the salah straight away. Um, initially, I'll just mention the main ones. I don't go into more details. So the the very first one is to um, doubt about and the shek in the two rak'at of, of salah. So for example, you pray salat al-subh, which is only two rak'at. Yes. Also, Salat al-Musafir, okay, which uh, makes Salat al-Duhr, Asr, yes, yes. shortens the Duhr and Asr, and Isha, and Isha into two rak'ah. No. In any two rak'ah Salah, uh, if you have doubts between the first and the second, so you're not sure, is it the first rak'ah or second rak'ah? And let me just explain what the doubts or the shek means. The shek means 50-50. You have no idea, there's no weight on the other side, so you can yes. proceed. There's no done. So yes. you can give 80-90% or almost yeah, certainty I'm, 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 yeah. that this is the second rak'ah. It's doubt, check. So in this case, you're in the middle, you're not sure, is it this side or the other side? Is it uh, the first rak'ah or the second rak'ah? In this case, the salah will be batil and void. Sheikhna, do you have any tips for anyone, just in case? I mean. Can someone maybe recite one surah in one rakat, another in another rakat, just to make, you know, to, he can fall back and think that, ah, oh, yeah, I, I remember reading that surah, this must be my second rakat. Is there any tips you can give someone to help them with focusing in salah, making sure they're on the, they know what rakat that they're on? What I have been uh, doing for myself for years and practically, especially when I need the jama'ah, yes. make sure I don't really make the mistakes or the shak. I use my um, aqiq ring um, in which when I start my first rak'ah of salah, I would put it on the first yes. uh, finger, finger, the small okay, finger. The small and then the second rak'ah, I move it to the second, uh -huh. third and fourth. Ah, that see. makes things easier and uh, keeps reminding you for, of which rak'ah you are in. Okay. So that is the best and practical way to uh, remind yourself of which rak'ah you are in. So Ascent. I'm Ascent. using myself and alhamdulillah things going well. Masha'ala. And I have less I had, I had friend, doubts. I had a friend. <laughs> he wrote on his turba one, two, three, four. Right. And every time he finishes his second sujood, he'll turn it. He'll turn it like that okay. so he knows which one he's on. But I, I <laughs> no, that's I think more practical yeah. and uh, it's easier to yeah. to deal with. And Masha'ala. it's always in your, in your fingers. Masha'ala. So yeah, please continue. Doubts that invalidate the prayer. Exactly. The other. Um, type of invalidating doubts and check is when you do the check in the salah of three, uh, three rak'ah like salat al-maghrib it's only three rak'ah in this case the salah will be batal as well so that is another uh, type of salah in which becomes batal even if it's uh, I mean uh, you, you did the check between these rak'at one, two or three also the doubts in the number of the rak'at, you're not sure how many rak'at you read. Was it two, mm -hmm. three, four? You just lost. You're just, you know, went, you know, blank. Mine's gone blank, yeah. Nothing is clear. Where am I? In this case, the salah will be batal as well and void, and okay. you have to repeat the salah. Okay, okay. MashaAllah. Uh, Shaykhna, if I get one of the 
invalidating doubts. Should I abort the salah? Well, of course, now the salah is no more um, stable in terms of its uh, consistency. The, the salah is almost, uh, you cannot go forward or backward. Uh, you're in the middle. You're not sure if it's the first or second rak'ah. So you've kind of lost the structure of the exactly. salah. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. In this case, you can abort the salah. You turn your body or face towards the other side of the qibla, salah is aborted. Or you can wait and pause and ponder and think that, you know, in which rak'ah I was. You try to give it an opportunity, a second chance to see if you can raise the shek to, let's say, the certainty, let's say. Because sometimes you pray in a crowded place, uh, the mind, uh, you know, gets a bit lost its way. So if you, might, if you think a bit, you might gain the certainty that you're in the first or second rak'ah. However, if that took too long, and the posture of salah, as we said, uh, changed and modified, then khalas, the salah is also batil, and you have to leave the salah and, and repray the salah again. Shaykh, are there any doubts which we should ignore? That if they come to our minds, don't worry about it, ignore it, carry on going. Yes, there are a couple of ones in which you have to ignore. So that's the second type. The first type we mentioned was the invalidating doubts and check. Now, the ones which you have to ignore, and they are sahih and correct. You don't have to be worried about it. The first doubt is when you doubt after moving into the second stage or the, um, the next phase of the salah. So let's say, for example, um, if you doubt while you're in ruku' in the ruku' state, did I read hamd and surah, or did, did I read just the hamd? Yes. Because you are in a different phase and stage mm -hmm. of the salah, and as we said, there's a qa'ida, a basis, yes. which is called qa'ida at tajawuz no. the basis of exceeding the, yes. the stage and the limit. Because you exceeded this limit of hamd and surah, now you're in the ruku' and it's a rukun as well, yes. a key element of salah. In this case, you ignore your shak and you just keep uh, mm -hmm. praying and carrying, carrying out uh, the salah. Um, so that's the first um, type of ignoring the, uh, the, the shak. So if you have moved on to the next stage or part of your salah, whoever was behind, you can ignore. You can exactly, yes, yes. And you don't have to repeat the salah. Not anymore. at all, not at all. That's this nice. is one of the types of, of uh, doubts in which you have to ignore and move on. Okay. Um, the second type is the doubt after the salam. In other words, after you finish the salah, yeah. you said assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, you just made uh, out a, a doubt. That did I pray the first rak'ah? Did I perform ruku'? Did I perform uh, tashahud, let's say, or qiyam, for example? Because you have ended the salah, and again, I remind you of uh, the other basis, the qa'idah, which is known as qa'idat al-faragh, the basis of ending. When you ended uh, the salah, now you don't go back to the previous uh, doubts, khalas. Even if you had doubts in the rukun and key elements, but because you have passed the stage and you finished, khalas, you just ignore it and move on to the next salah or to the next ibadah. Um, also, we have the third type of um, doubts which should be ignored, and it is the doubt after the expiry of the salam time. Okay. In other words, in other words, you pray, um, and then let's, let's say salat subuh. In the afternoon, the doubt rises that did I pray salat subuh or no? You know, eight, ten hours afterwards, after the sunrise, uh, even the time is now Dhuhr time, Asr time. Uh, by all that means, in such a state, because th the time expired, the sun rose, and you enter into a into new stage of the daytime, or even nighttime, and the vice versa. In this case, you don't have to actually uh, to perform the salah and repeat the salah. Okay. However, however, if this doubt was within the time, 
So let's say you woke up in the morning for the Salat al-Subuh and you prayed but afterwards you had the shak and doubt. Did I pray or no? You're not sure. If you're feeling sleepy, tired, you know, um, unsure of your act. Did I really stood up and said takbir al-ihram and prayed, read the hamd, surah, sujood, record everything? In this case, because you're in, in time, inside the time, the actual time, in adat time, you must redo the salah. Okay. So we have to differentiate. If it's outside the, the time of the salah, you don't have to repeat don't it. Don't worry about it. No qada, nothing. Mm -hmm. If it's inside the time, you must redo the salah. Okay. If you uh, have the doubt that if you have performed the salah or no. Oh, I see. That's the asal, the, the mm -hmm. actual act. Did I actually prayed or no? Okay. If this doubt is raised within uh, the time, you have to do it. I think, I think if it's outside the time, then that's it. Yeah, you just I ignore it. I would put a great emphasis on having Salah in your routine and that uh, uh, you know you should pray on time because I've noticed um, you know with some of my friends and the brothers um, they normally pray at a certain time but if they pray earlier then they come to that time where they routinely pray let's say they pray every four o'clock for, for Zohar Asaf quite late uh, and then they pray at one o'clock and then four o'clock comes oh, I need to pray then like, hold on did I pray or not I'm not sure I think I did I'm not sure or vice versa if they pray, pray quite early and they missed it they still assume that they have prayed because it's their routine so I guess it's very important to stick to your routine and to pray on time. Of course, the best option uh, for the believers is to pray on time. The emphasis is on time. Mm -hmm. And the Quran says, Aqim salat li shams. So you pray on time. Also, you can ignore uh, the doubt and the shak. If somebody is in trouble of making excessive uh, doubts, in other words, if you do uh, continuous doubts in Salat al-Subuh and then Dhuhr and then Asr. So let's say you have this doubt, did I, let's say, um, read Alhamdan Surah, for example, or any part of Salah for three times, consecutive times. In this case, you ignore this doubt and shak. So you became what? What is known as Kathir al-Shak, excessive doubt. Uh, in this case, you just leave it uh, and ignore it. Because this is now you're in a situation of kathir shak. You're making doubts too much. So if they continue based on three consecutive uh, timings, salah timing, subh, dhuhr, asr, or asr, maghrib, isha, mathalan, or maghrib, isha, and subh, in this case you ignore the shak and doubt and you continue with the salah. So that's uh, also another um, ways in which you have to ignore the, uh, the doubt. And lastly, <coughs> um, if you are in a jama'ah prayer, now there's two scenarios. Number one, if you're the imam of the jama'ah praying and you have the ma'mumin behind you, praying yeah. behind you, if you do a doubt, a shak, you have to rely on the, the people behind you. Yes. People behind you, and if they say to you, it's, you know, if they mention you, Allah Akbar, you know, sometimes they. Yeah. They, um, they tell you to you know, stand up or sit down mm -hmm. or you know, assalamu alaikum and so forth. They try to tell you what to do yes. to, to end the salah, to continue the salah. They'll, they'll, you follow they'll, the, they'll the imam mumin. They'll help you, they'll help correct your salah. Exactly. Indicate what you need exactly. to do. Exactly. Yes, I've seen it happen. Also, if you are be praying behind the imam, yes. also uh, you don't have to worry about the shak. Mm -hmm. So just follow the, the, the sequence by the Imam. The imam yes. If he stands up, you stand up. Second rak'ah, fourth rak'ah, and so forth. You follow the Imam uh, with the sequence that he is following. So you just ignore your shak by following the Imam. Because you're in Jama'ah now. And the Imam is reading the Jama'ah and everyone is, you know, peacefully doing the Salah. So that's it. You just follow the Jama'ah and ignore, and ignore your, uh, your shak and, and doubt. And these are basically the... Um, uh, doubts in which you should uh, ignore. Hassan, mashallah. Sheikhna, uh, what are the valid doubts, the doubts that we're allowed to have? Um, the valid doubts in which you are allowed uh, to um, consider, and there are solutions for these doubts. It's not just you have to ignore it yes. or make the salah batil void and re pray again. 
these are uh, with solutions and cure if they happen. So for example, if the one performs um, a salah and then he's not sure is he in the second or third rak'ah of salah. So doubt between second and third rak'ah. Did I do two rak'ah or did I do three rak'ah? In this case, uh, if this um, issue was raised after he uh, raised his, he his head from the second sajda, so raising the head from the second sajda, um, in this case, he makes the intention that he prayed three rak'ah. Okay. He prayed three rak'ah, and then he adds one more rak'ah, and he, and he finishes the salah. When he finishes the salah, there's something called salat al-ihtiyat, one rak'ah ihtiyat. Yes. You might have missed one rak'ah that recovers. Okay, uh, so, so it's, it's an additional. Exactly. You, you pay for the, well, you recite the one that you may have missed out, that you think you've missed out. Exactly. So what he does, he stands up after he's saying the salam, stands up, and he says Allahu Akbar, and he reads uh, the Surah Al Hamd silently with the basmala, and then ruku' sujood, tashahud, and salam. Okay. Just one rak'ah hmm. to recover, just in case if a rak'ah was missed. Okay, Although he made, according to you know the, um, he followed the procedures of uh, is, overcoming the shak, but just in case if he missed rak'ah, that would yes. recover. Is there such the sawf for that as well, or just the one rak'ah on its own? The Sayyid mentions only uh, salat al hatiyat for this okay. case, because he hasn't added anything to the mm -hmm. salah or taken off. Ahsan Shaykhna. So uh, when one is, is assuming it is. Uh, is it his second or third raqa? He treats it as his, his third raqa. What if one is, doesn't know, is confused between whether this raqa is his third or fourth raqa? If the one doubts about either being in the third or fourth raqa, there's a doubt, and he's not sure, is it the third raqa or the fourth raqa? In this case, and according to the, to the, uh, to the rules in fiqh, that you base on uh, the more. So you base um, the rak'at on the, the more, the excessive rak'ah. So you say it's four, four rak'ah. So you finish the salah, and then you stand up straight away after the salam, taslima, and you do rak'at al -hatiyat. So in anywhere you, of the salah you were, uh, you know, in a standing position, in a ruku' sujood, and this doubt was raised uh, between three and four. You just based it on four. Okay. That you prayed for rak'ah. With Salat as I've mentioned, uh, should fulfill uh, yes. and, and cover up this Insha. issue. No such the so in this one? Not at all, not at all. Just Salat al Because you haven't added anything or yes. taken off anything. Oh, so I see. It's just a doubt that you're trying to treat and yes. cure. Yes, Ahsan. Thank you very much, Sheikh Nair. Thank you to all. Our viewers for joining us on Ihqam SOS, inshallah, we'll be discussing more on doubts and more on salah, inshallah, in the next episode. Until then, salamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.